Such a lovely day to be outside. Oh. So it's another day in house arrest, another day in quarantine. And I thought to myself, well, I just want to chill today. So I'll watch one of my films. I wanted to watch Iron Man. Don't have Iron Man. So I thought, you know what, let's watch The Dark Knight. It's right there. Uh, I only have the special features disc. So that went down the drain. I don't know where the actual film is. So I had to fork out six quid to watch Iron Man. I really wanted to watch that film. Haven't even watched it yet. So that's six quid down the drain. Uh, so I also made a Animal Crossing video. Uh, maybe saw the ser- Nope. Too much hassle. And I still feel a little bit iffy. Not the corona. What could I do to make myself productive? To feel productive? Apart from doing exercise. Because that is a no-no. That is a big, big no-no. So I thought, as you can see, here's my iMac. I wouldn't necessarily call it infamous, but it's my iMac and my MacBook Air. We're not talking about my MacBook Air, we're talking about my iMac. It is the upgraded version of the 21.5 inch. And, oh, hello. As you might know, I haven't made a review on it. I was, I made one, and if you want to see that, uh, just comment down below. You don't have to. I probably won't uh, either way because it's a bit cringe. But that was before I upgraded anything on it. So I want to do that. I want to put an SSD and RAM, but most importantly, an SSD onto this Mac. Because it is moderately easy, you just need the right tools. And that's a video project that we could do. But not at the moment. Voila. As you can see, it is the VS tech table right there. And what's that waiting for us? That's not a MacBook. It's not a Pro. It is a iBook G4. Now, a lot of you might, well, a few of you might know that this iBook is quite famous on my old channel, on the Vapor Square Gaming channel. It was, the review of it was the most popular video on my channel with over 500 views. Now, that's not a lot, but no video came close on my old channel. And I didn't do much with it after that. And I made a review on this. We'll get to this in a bit, definitely. We'll get to this in a bit. But this video is mostly focused on the iBook G4. Old Max are surprisingly easy and intuitive to get into and to upgrade. In fact, even on my old MacBook Pro down there from 2008, it had instructions on how to upgrade the RAM and the uh, hard drive, which was separate from the rest of the computer. But we're not on about that. We're not on about that. However, I do want to show you something. Turn on the desk's power. I've already got this plugged in. <laughs> if I bought this around a year or two ago, just because I like, I, I was thinking of collecting vintage Max. Now, <laughs> I gave this to um, and he never told me about this. But let's just turn it on for the heck of it, eh? Oh, there we are. Ew, what is that? Yes, guys, as you can tell, it's got a bit of a LCD crackage right there. And apart from that, it works fine. I've got a keyboard and mouse connected to it. And I just use this so that if I don't have my MacBook at this desk, I can just Google something. Or just for the legacy part of it. Uh-uh, no, no, no. And even then, it's got bloody line on it, so it's pretty much useless. It's essentially bricked. It takes forever to load up. But, mate, ugh, that is annoying. Because, uh, I mean, I... Yeah, just ignore that. Uh, I guess it's an excuse to make another video on this, up uh, replacing the LCD, but I don't want to do that. So what I'll probably do is I'll probably buy... A old 2007 or 2008, and at least that can be upgraded to El Capitan, and it's somewhat useful. Because surprisingly enough, El Capitan is my favourite Mac OS, or OS X, as it was called. Apart from Mavericks, apart from Mountain Lion. But yeah, that's that. Uh, <laughs> this uh, episode in this video might be an episode, might be a series, who knows. We're going to be on the uh, Vapid Square tech table. We're going to be... Upgrading the RAM and seeing how easy it is to upgrade it on this iBook. Now I'll show you in a bit, but honestly, oh yeah, by the way, the keyboard on these are amazing. It's probably my favorite Apple keyboard. 
and they have a metal version of this on the power bucks and oh i love it i want a power book 12 inch at some point they look absolutely amazing and it's a nice comparison between the iBook and the Power Mac, uh, the PowerBook, because it's probably the best time for Apple in terms of budget and professional differentiations and also usability. Rather than the MacBook having thermal throttling, throttling, the iBook was still had a purpose, and there wasn't any computer except for I think when they had the Power Mac. And the G3 and the G4 variations at this are going at the same time. Uh, there was a solid use for this use case for this, and there was a solid use case for the for for the power books. But honestly, and the 12 inch and the 15 inch, there was never a 13 inch. That was when the widescreens became available and when the unibody was about. But yeah, anyway, that's besides the point. We're going to be upgrading the RAM on this, and I'm just going to be showing you how to do it. And it should be easy. However, I don't know what... I think it takes regular uh, sodium. So, well, for, uh, first generation SD RAM. But we'll see. We'll power it up first and we'll see how much RAM is in it. And, let's see, and we'll see what we can do. But it's mostly a tutorial and also just a PSA on what... And how to do it, essentially. But what I'm doing right now is I'm just getting the power adapter. Um, it doesn't have MagSafe. I think that... Ca well, that did come out um, at the same time the first MacBook Pros with the Intel Core processors. Uh, you know what, I don't even know why they haven't changed AMD, probably because they're um, working on their ARM processors for desktop. But now they use this, uh, probably not the best rendition of this type of power cable. I think the clamshell version of the iBook G3 looks way better than just this. Even though it does suit it, I don't know why I'm bloody, like, gasping over a bloody power cable. But nah, that <laughs> is what it is. So we just plug it in there. And I think it's the same for all the other Power Macs. Well, Power PC Macs running the Power PC architecture. I think it, it was it was good for them to change uh, to Intel. Uh, right. The good thing, though, they still use all the same accessories just because... It's a DC connection, so it's easy just to plop, plop it in from a MacBook Pro. I don't know where my one came from, my iBook. And the good thing about the uh, G4s and the G, even the G3s, because they've got DVD, super DVD players, um, you can run DVDs fine. These are brilliant DVD players and DVD burners. Haven't done that yet though, and I think I've had a couple of snags in the past. Oh, sounds like Wally that. Now, the power is annoying because what I'd usually do is I wouldn't have the uh, battery plugged in whilst I have this going. However, I think this has caked it a little bit, not going to lie. I haven't been proper inside yet and, I, and when I can, I will replace the thermal paste on it. But what I was saying was I would never normally put an old piece of equipment on with their battery connected to the mains because like what happened with my IBM laptop it short circuited the whole entire house so that's something in style Mac OS 10 here of Apple Square Gaming now I think this can go up to Leopard however I haven't done that I've kept it at Tiger just because I used to use this as my daily laptop as well for a little bit it's actually pretty mad um, it's got the numlock thing there for no reason Honestly, it is a nice little laptop. The PowerPC architecture, though, is really dated. And fun fact, the Xbox 360 has an IBM PowerPC CPU. But even, mate, even their uh, touchpads, I think this isn't the version with the... This isn't the last iBook G4, so it doesn't have the two-finger scrolling, which would be brilliant. But it's still got everything, and maybe I should turn down the sensitivity. That might just be something wrong with the... Uh, Mouse pad, but here we are. We've got um, tap to open. So let's go to about this Mac. We've got 768 megabytes of DDR SD RAM and a 1.2 gigahertz PowerPC G4. Now these run really hot. Surprisingly, I haven't noticed it with this, but you can you know that the fans are going. Let's see if anything's in the drive. So 
1983 to 2007, these PowerPC, PowerPC Max, were supported for a really long time, all the way up to 2009. I think that's pretty, that's pretty good on Apple's part. They didn't have to because that means they have to write two different code pieces of code for each for the PowerPC and the Intel version. Which also means there's quite a lot of legacy software. Now I keep Mac, I keep Tiger on it just because it has a classic environment. But I've never had to use it, really. So we now know what the amount of SD RAM is on it. Um, going by what I have in my supply, we'll see how how much we can upgrade this from. So let's just take it out of its power supply. It, do, it does hold a charge somewhat, but... These are really easy to replace, but I would never get a third party battery just because, and also I never use it. I'm not paying 20 quid for a bloody battery for a computer I never use. So all you have to do to open it up, to even replace the uh, airport card, I think this is the first computer I ever opened up. And you know what? It's really intuitive. It's really clever. All you have to do is unplug this bit, pull these two tabs, lift it up, and there you go. That's it, and from here we can get our Phillips head screwdriver and we can unscrew these four bits right here. First off, obviously, we have to take out the Airport Extreme card, which is a technical marvel. It's still, I, I don't, oh, I don't want to force it. Committee bastard. There we are. Right, so Airport Extreme card, guys. It's what's in every single. Well, it's what they still call it. They still have an Airport Extreme card. But this user upgradable one was used in these Macs for sure and most of the Macs before. But they had a different Airport, just a regular Airport card. This is probably the first decent wireless connectivity. So what we're going to do now, it even says on these little instructions here, you won't be able to read them. But what we're going to do is we're going to take out these four screws. I think it's a really decent... Uh, G4 processor in this. It's not. It wouldn't have been used to edit. Definitely not. There, there was great, great variations compared to this, the iBook and the PowerBook, and then even more so with the G5, which ran really hot. So all we have to do is take this bit off, and we get a go at the RAM. We always have to undo that bit. The RAM, and I want to take this. Maybe I can't, maybe I can, but if you can't see, I'll take it out here. I don't think I've ever took out these ra this RAM. Um, here is, now, I'm pretty sure there's two slots of RAM, but and the, only the top bit is user upgradable, and you can get into it with, I don't uh, know, it's Philips head. We'll see what the chipset is like with what I have. But I'm pretty sure we could get at least one gig. It might not be efficient, but we might be able to get at least one gig out of it. So there's that. And we've got a jar of RAM. Maybe not the best place to put it, but hey-ho. Ho-hum. How much is this? 256 megs here. And I think I have one gig here, maybe? Yes. However, this is... Let's... It might be the exact same, let's give it a look. It is. Here's one gig right here. I've got a lot of RAM that doesn't show how much gig is on it and I could probably look it up if I really wanted to. But this is a SODIM. And I think it did say SD RAM. However, it will, will easily be able to find out if it works or not just by putting it in. It seems to fit. It seems to definitely fit. However, Yes, it fits. Before we put everything together, we're just gonna maybe put that to one side. We're not connecting it to the internet, so we don't have to have this in. Uh, we'll just plug it in, and we'll see what we get. We've got 1.25 gigs of DDR SD RAM. Well done, guys. Now that also means that there is another RAM stick further within the uh, logic board. I don't think it, it wouldn't be sorted in. So this is the PowerBook 6.5. That that uh, doesn't mean anything. 
Um, memory, 1.2 gig 5. So let's talk, let's go to memory. And there'll probably be two slots. So there will be DIMM0 built in. So that is the 256 megs. Um, which I think, where is it? This one would have been another 256, if my math is correct. I haven't even worked that out. And then it's built in. And then the DIMM that we just put in is one gig. It's supposedly working. It seems like everything is working fine. We don't have the airport plugged in, no information found though. So we'll command key that and we'll put everything back together. It just goes back down. Everything should be fine. If it's gonna load, if it wants to load, and again, there we are. Bulged. That's it. Um, we've just upgraded RAM on a Mac. We've just upgraded a Mac. That's quite surprising, to be fair. Um, I'll probably do another sort of video on this. Definitely on the iMac. Not sure about that one. Not too sure about a different computer. This isn't just tied to Max, but that just proves how easy older Max were compared to newer Max. Anyway, yeah, next episode will probably be on the iMac, and we'll see. See you later, my tasers.